Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be trying too hard to make her chase you leads to ghosting. I've got an email today. This one is actually from a 41-year-old guy. He's been following me for a year. He says he's read 3% Man seven times so far. But he says his problem is that after he has several dates, many of which obviously he's getting intimate with her, that the women just tend to fade away. And after reading his email, because obviously I've already been through it, I can tell that part of what he's doing is he's cherry picking and he's taking things too literally about what I talk about. And he's also taking some of the dates that I talk about that you do when you're trying to get an ex back and incorporating that into his normal dating and seduction with women he just started dating. And so what's happening here, and then also the other thing is, He's being extremely lazy and he just figures that all he has to do is sleep with the girl once and then she's just basically going to call him, come over and sleep with him whenever he wants. He doesn't have to take her out. He doesn't have to date her. doesn't have to talk to her. doesn't really have to do anything. And that's part of his problem here. So he's cherry picking things from the book and wondering and basically treating women like a booty call that he first meets. They pick up on it right away and this one woman that he's talking about here, I mean, you could just tell that I mean, some of the things she says, she's basically made to feel like she was just a girl he was hooking up with and he didn't care. And then he's surprised that they disappear on him. So it's a good email to understand the difference between what you do when you're trying to attract an ex back and what you're trying to do and the process of getting a woman to a point where she'll actually start calling you and texting you and eventually doing most of the calling, texting, and pursuing. And all you have to do is make dates. But you can already tell after he sees her a couple of times, he's just basically inviting her over to his house all the time and not doing anything with her. And then she picks up right up on it right away, even mentions this to him, but it just sails right over his head. He says, hello, coach. I hope you're doing well. My name is Bob. I'm 41 and I've been following your work for about a year. And I've listened to the Kindle audio in your book first time so far, seven times so far, and I continue to do so. I met a girl at the beach while kiteboarding. She had high interest, so I set a date in the spot two days ahead. I followed the plan from your book, and the date ended at my place with the indoor Olympics. Well, as I talk about in 3% Man, ideally, you want to take her to three different places. So how does that look? Typically, you know, he's meeting her at the beach, talk for, you know, maybe he talked for 10 or 15 minutes, made a date. He could tell she really liked him. So something like that, you're going to probably invite her to meet you out for drinks somewhere because, again, you, you haven't spent much time with her, so you don't really know whether or not you want to go and go to dinner and all these other things. And so you go and you have drinks, things go well, and then you can invite her to go somewhere else with you that's nearby because you got to think of the logistics and then have dinner together. And then after dinner, you go to a third place, maybe shoot some pool, throw some darts, maybe bowling, miniature golf. Some kind of fun activity where you can interact, like maybe like a Dave and Buster's kind of thing, where you can interact and you can play play video games with her or pool and just demolish her <laughs> and crush her and, and make fun of her and, and have a good time at it <clears throat> because that facilitates physical interactions, her touching you, her playfully punching you when you just absolutely crush her and Galaga or one of these old school video games or something. You start making out. Maybe, maybe, you know, some of the places have go-karts and stuff. Like Maybe you, you beat her in, in, in go-karts. But then you invite her to say, hey, you know, and you're all over each other and making out. You say, hey, why don't we get out of here and go back to my place and open a bottle of wine. And by then, she'll, she feels comfortable. Plus, you've gone to three different venues. It's like because most guys pick a girl up or they meet her out, they have drinks, and then that's the end of the date. Here you go to three different places together, and then ultimately you end up back at your place, which would technically be the fourth place. It's, you know, getting in and out of your car or walking from venue to venue. Maybe you live in a nice area where there's all kinds of cool things that you can do within walking distance of wherever you live. Or a short, short Uber or train ride or something like that. But point being is that it, it gives her the experience of being on multiple dates with you. That's why it helps speed up the seduction process. And so it's he does that on the first date, it seems like, or I'm assuming he does. 
And then he just thinks, okay, well, my work is done here. My pursuit is over. Now she'll just blow up my phone and be dying to see me. And all I have to do is invite her over to come to my place and have sex. And that'll be the end of it. It's a bad, bad way to go. This is, you just see why most people never really achieve their dreams because they're, because they're just lazy and they do mediocre things. Most people tend to major in minor things. And this guy's already, after one date of hooking up with her, he's already shortcutting the process because he thinks, oh, it doesn't apply to me. I'll just have her come over and then we can just get right to sex. And remember, what is the formula? Hang out, have fun, hook up. The hookup comes at the end. And then after the first date, he just basically treats it as if we'll just go straight to the hookup now. We'll just skip the hanging out and the having fun, which is what makes her feel like you care and you want to hang out with her and you want to show her a good time and you want to go out and do something fun together. <clears throat> so he says, I waited four days and arranged a second date the same day as the previous week and we had dinner. I asked her about her father and she said they didn't get along well and he was always putting her down. After finishing dinner, I told her, let's go hang out at my place. So, again, the, as the book says, three different places. So he takes her to dinner. He's like, and so the vibe already when he does that is like, okay, I bought you food. Like, the, you know, if you ever saw the Chris Rock comedy routine, he's like, hey, let me get that door for you. Want some dick? Hey, let me take you to dinner. After dinner, hey, want some dick? And that's basically what he's doing. He's shortcutting the process here. He figures, hey, we've already been intimate. We'll just go eat and then go right to my place and have sex. And women aren't stupid. They, they know what you're doing. But if you take the time to go and do fun things together, and at the end of the evening, when you've had a good time, that's when the sex happens. Not go to dinner at 7, you're done with dinner at 8, and then 8.30, you're home bumping uglies. He said... <laughs> He says, after finishing dinner, I told her, let's go hang out at my place. <laughs> so notice what she says here. After finishing dinner, I told her, let's go hang out at my place. And she said it was too early in the night and suggested we go for a drink. And we went. Voila. Because what you want is when you finally do ask her that, she's like, oh, that'd be great. Women help you when they like you. And at least at this point, she's trying to help them out. There, there she complained that I didn't call her earlier and she thought that it was a one-night stand. So already he's given her the vibes of just a hookup and it sounds like she's looking for something more. I replied that if she'd like to see me, she could also call her text and I'll arrange a meeting. Sounds like he just took something right from the book and put it into a response and regurgitate, regurgitated it to her like a platitude. This is just sloppy, dude. And this girl likes him. Again, afterwards, we went to my place for another session of the Indoor Olympics. She said that she had to leave before morning to walk her dogs. I was too sleepy to take her to her place, and she said, no problem, I'll call an Uber. Come on, man. So notice what she says next. She then said, as she was walking to the door, that that's the walk of shame. He says, I joke saying that the real walk of shame is in kiteboarding, something that beginners struggle with. So, I mean, again, she's basically saying, you're treating me like a booty call. And he's just, whoosh, it's sailing right over his head. So it seems like he followed what I teach for the first date. And after that, he threw everything out. And he goes, oh, I'm just going to cherry pick things. The next day, she texted me and I asked when she was free. We arranged two days later. For my place. Oh, so he he just goes ahead and we're just going to skip the date altogether. Just come to my place so we can have sex. He didn't say it, but that's what he's giving their impression of. Remember, she just, as she left the last time, because he was too lazy to get his, oh, I'm just too tired. Oh, yeah, take an Uber. He says, one day before I texted her, I mean, this is fine. You've been dating for six months or a year or two, but it's like, come on, dude. I mean, this is pretty pathetically lazy. One day before, I texted her when she was having dinner at the latest. She replied, I'm feeling a little sick and can't make it. I said, okay, get well soon and contact me afterwards. The night of the canceled date, I called her to see how she is. Well, that was a nice thing to do. It does show that you care, but there's a good chance she canceled because you just, you just like, okay, well, let's just skip all the dinners and I'll just have her come over. 
Now, you can maybe get away with that if you're rocking her world in the bedroom and you're giving her multiple orgasms, then she's going to be happy to come over. But if you're lame in bed and you don't really make sure that she's getting off, it's like she comes over and the sex isn't that great. It's like, pfft. what's her incentive to come back just so you can get your rocks off? And then you you know have her walk, walk the walk of shame to your front door as she takes an Uber? She said she was okay, and I told her I had to go to sleep as I had to work early in the, in the morning. From that point, I set another date two days later at my place again. And five hours before, she cancels again, saying we'll arrange it next week when I return from a journey for dinner out. Not my place, obviously. What a dummy. I called her the following week and she said she was free Monday and I couldn't because of work. She replied, I'm busy too and we'll talk again. <laughs> I said, text me when you figure out your schedule. It's been 10 days now and I haven't heard from her. What do you think I should do, coach? My opinion is nothing, but I'd like to hear yours too. It's like, well, you should actually follow what's in the book, not throw it out the window after the first date because you got your noodle wet. Like she told you multiple times that she felt like a booty call. And what do you do? You're like, oh, well, let's just dispense with the dinner and the drinks and all those other fun things we do. Just come over so we can have some bad sex probably. Because like I said, if you were rocking her world and giving her multiple orgasms one after the other, which probably most no guys have ever done to her in her life, it's like she'd be happy to come over probably to do that. But even then, after a while, she's going to start to complain that you never take her out. But she does like the good sex. So you got to follow what's in the book, bro. It's simple. Hang out, have fun, hook up. You should be going to two to three different places. This is okay. Maybe once you can see what's going to happen here is that this guy is like his, his idea is just, hey, come over, have sex with me, and then take an Uber home. It's like, what do you think? What do you think you're going to get with that? You might as well just get a hooker and have her come over and have sex with you. And whoosh. I mean, this girl liked you a lot. And she's communicating that what you were doing was inappropriate, but it just sailed right over your head. So if I was you in this particular case, because you did act act like a douche canoe on multiple occasions, call her up. If it's been if you haven't heard from her in two weeks, I would call her up, invite her out, go pick her up, take her out, and do three three different venues like you did the first night, I assume. And then the last place you go when you're kissing and you're making out and you're all over each other, that's when you invite her to go back to your place. Taking her out on dates and spending some money on her, and making dinner reservations, or taking her to some interesting place doesn't have to be expensive. You can take her to some historical thing that's going on in the in the city or something interesting that she didn't even know was there. That shows that you care. But you just basically started treating her like a booty call and wanting her to do all the work and do all the chasing because you're lazy and you're cherry picking, and she blew you off. That's why she canceled two dates on you. Because she knew what you were up to. Any pretty girl has been through this countless times with other guys that that they've met. So it's like you're not being clever, dude. Not even in the least bit clever. But at least you got laid a few times. It's just you can't do this. This is, just doesn't work, dude. You cannot behave this way. And, and especially when the girl's complaining and telling you what you need to be doing differently and you just ignore it and then, hey, just come over to my place. Like that. that's pathetic, man. So this is why you're getting blown off and you're getting ghosted. You just can't behave that way. you got to follow what's in the book, not cherry pick a few things. Go, oh, yeah, I got to the promised land. Now my job is over. I'll just invite her over for, for bad sex. It's Like I said, if you were rocking her world out and she's having multiple orgasms, she probably would have come over at least a few times because the sex is so good. But if she's canceling on you twice, you probably weren't very good in bed because you didn't know what you were doing and you blew your wad and you just assumed she got off and enjoyed herself. Bad way to go, my man. So if you got a question or challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.